We've made great progress on our 55 F100 Resto Mod project this season, and today we plan on making a lot more. Absolutely. We're going to get it blown apart for final paint by the end of the day. But there's a little bit of last minute fabrication we need to take care of so we don't scratch Jeremy's fancy paint job. This 3.5 liter EcoBoost fits nicely between the frame rails of our JW Rod Garage chassis, but there is one major piece that's missing, the cooling system. And I've got a few parts out in the booth I still need to prep for paint, so if you don't mind taking care of that. Yeah, I got you. Fitting an intercooler into a twin turboed 55 F100 is definitely no easy task, and it's going to require a couple of custom parts. To help us get started, we have a special guest in the shop today. This is Jay Thornton from Vibrant Performance. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Tell me about some of these parts that you brought and how they'll help us get an intercooler into that F100. Sure thing. We've got an array of product from our catalog or website uh, that can help you get the job done in almost any fabrication setup that you might be having on any car. Right. Uh, we brought with us some velocity stacks for increased flow on an intake. We've got some simple filters, you know, array of uh, silicone couplers that, you know, help you transition, give you some flexibility. Yeah. I know a lot of this stuff is hard to find, so you guys have really wide selection. Very wide selection, and they're all four-ply Aramid uh, weave, so they're pretty strong for any application. Sure. We've even got aluminum tubing. It's all 6061 aluminum. Comes in many different bend radiuses, many different sizes. Nice. The HD clamp is a four-piece modular clamping system mm -hmm. for high-pressure turbo systems or for turbo systems where you need secure clamping and say race applications or daily driving applications where you want to make sure you've got a, a very secure clamp that's very reliable. Right. There again, 6061 uh, bill of aluminum. Ready to go out of the box. Ready to go out of the box. Right. Very clean out of the box. Minimal preparation again. Everybody needs an intercooler for their turbo system and we've got a wide selection of cores or prefabricated with N-Tank intercoolers that come with a offset fin design for the best efficiency to flow ratio. I see. Cool. Well, a couple weeks ago, I sent you a couple of drawings and templates yeah. of what I thought might work for F100. Um, so I know you made up a couple technical drawings, so let's take a look at how we're going to translate that pattern into a real world intercooler. Yeah, sure thing. Awesome. All right, Jay, we've got our template here, and this is kind of what I figured out how it would fit best in the truck. We get a couple of inlets on the bottom, the air is going to flow up through the intercooler and exit on the top. You know, the one way we could have built this is started with our template, get the intercooler cores in here, and cut up a little bit of aluminum, you know, maybe use a template out of cardboard. Um, it would have taken us a little while, but we definitely could have made an intercooler. Um, but since we have you and your expertise here, how would you do it? Well, in this case where you and I are working together, I get the image of your, uh, your template here. I transfer all of your needed or labeled information as far as dimensional info into the computer in combination with set dimensions from the intercooler core that we're going to use. Right. I know that you know, we don't have an intercooler core that's exactly what you labeled here, but I have two that I can weld together to get the same job done. Right. So I'm going to weld those two and I'm going to place them in the computer. I'm also going to model up some, uh, some end tanks. The computer's going to tell me how big they are in terms of flat sheet metal, and I'm going to send that to a laser cutter, and we're going to get it back, and then, you know, it makes the job a lot faster and more efficient to put together. All right, well, let's get started. Awesome, yeah. After Jay sets up the TIG, the first thing to do is combine the two three-and-a-half-inch air-to-air cores by tacking them together, then fully welding. From his CAD model, he laser cut and brought with him all the aluminum pieces that make up the tanks that will be welded to the now one-piece core. Well, first thing, I'm going to clean all this aluminum up and get all the residue off of it. The cleaner the aluminum is, the better it's going to weld. From there, we're going to take it on the finger brake and bend all the pieces to form the intercooler tanks top and bottom. So obviously, we don't want to move it too far or bend it too far. Because then when you try and bend it back, it creates a ripple in the aluminum. And it doesn't look so nice. That's good to work with. I just got to trim, do a little trimming on the one side. And we should be good. For the ideal fit up, you want to have a nice groove in here to make sure that you get a, a bead that's evenly spread along each surface. Jay will lay down about three tack welds per side. And I do this for all the tanks. Same when it comes time to attach it to the core. Once all the pieces are built and lined up, 
He'll seam weld the whole thing in one big swoop. So we've got this all welded up. Got my end tanks welded up. I'm gonna put them in place and tack the bottom ones in. Everything seemed to lined up pretty decently. So I'll just get these in place, spot weld them, then we'll put the top on just with some tape and mock it up in the truck. Well, let's see how this thing will fit up. With proper fitment, next thing to figure out is where the outlet to the throttle body will go. He'll build that next. Later on, how a plug and play retune can wake up your pickup. We're back on Truck Tech, where guest fabricator Jay Thornton is in the middle of building a custom intercooler for our 55 F100. Retrofitting twin turbos in a 60-year-old pickup presents some challenges, which Jay is accustomed to. He's the technical lead for vibrant performance. Manufacturers of high-quality intake and exhaust components. Whether it's diesel pulling, the art of drifting, or competition drag racing, the demand for high performance no longer relies solely on displacement. More power can be found with efficiencies in cooling, exhaust flow, and better tuning. Vibrant Performance is a fabricator's one-stop shop for professional builder parts. So if you're building a turbo setup, you don't have to source your flanges in one place and your weld bungs in another. You can go to summitracing.com or any of our other online retailers and basically pick up everything from mufflers to resonators all the way up to our air-to-air -air intercoolers. On a scale of 1 to 10, the project that we're working with uh, today is maybe about a 7. You know, we're putting two intercoolers together, it's heavy. The heavy aspect of an intercooler means it's got the fin density to do the job properly. So it's not necessarily a light part as an intercooler is going to do the job better. But moving that heavy part around and fabricating around it and, and getting all of the details into the part, it's challenging. And we'll do a 180 degree sweep almost up, back up to this uh, joint. That'll still get us plenty of room to clear our radiator. Yeah. Assembly starts at the engine. I'm just gonna slip it on there. The first piece of tubing gets put through the vibrant bead roller. I'm gonna put a profile in it so it doesn't slip off the silicone when it's under high boost. Connection at the intercooler begins with their new HD clamp. It solves the typical problem of silicone boots coming apart at high boost. The clamp consists of two weld ferrules that are welded to the cooler and to the charge pipe. High temp O-rings, an anodized union sleeve, and a spring-loaded clamp with a locking pin. With a proper eighth of an inch gap between the welded fittings, the Vibrant HD clamp provides 12 degrees range of motion while the engine is under heavy load. With it all laid out and fully welded, Jay can mark the position for the blow-off valve, weld it on, cut the hole, and he's done with the most challenging piece of this puzzle. Well, Jay, there's a lot of hard work going on here, a lot of cool Vibrant products, and I love the result, man. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. It was a pleasure. Next, turning a bare steel chassis into a sheet of glass. We have our 55 F100 just about ready to paint, but I wanted to address the door gaps. Now, as you can see here, this is what they're supposed to look like, very tight and uniform. And as you get over to the top of the door, well, they get really wide and just look bad. Now, back in 55, fender and door gaps were the least of Ford's worries. But in a high-end resto mod like we're building, you want them to be as even as possible for a very clean look. So let's get started. Now, I'm going to show the proper way to fix this that will last a lifetime. I'm going to use this 8th inch steel rod to close this gap. As you can see, it fits the door edge almost perfectly. And once we weld it in, we'll have a good solid foundation. Now this is way better than the build up of filler which will bust on you down the road. You can go ahead and pre-bend your rod to the door, but a good tip is to bend it as you go. 
The heat created helps bend the rod while you're welding, making it nearly effortless. Once we're all welded up, we can grind down the welds with 36 grit on an angle grinder. All I'm trying to do right now is just get my welds ground down because the gap is actually really good right here with just the rod itself. And another thing you want to be very careful about when grinding, that also causes a lot of heat. So you want to try to move around a lot because this can also warp the metal. Our gap is almost perfect at the front of the door, but is a little tight up top. So I'll pull an even tape line to know exactly how much I need to grind away to make it uniform. A perfect door gap without using a lick of filler. With the truck just about ready for some new paint, we need to get it blown apart to get it down to a bare frame. We'll itemize all the parts and store them in a safe place. We're finally ready to start prepping parts to paint on our F100, which for me is one of the most exciting parts of any build. Now, a few weeks ago, we showed you how to paint a frame on a budget with our C10 project. And even though most professionals would thumb their noses at rattle canning a job, it's still a viable technique that'll last for years. Plus, we only had about a hundred bucks in it. For this resto mod, both frame, fenders, cab, and bedsides will be prepped and painted as if you were taking your truck to a high-end custom shop for restoration. And this means a multi-step process that is universal in our field. And it starts with epoxy primer, which will give us superior adhesion over our bare metal. Then a layer of primer surfacer which essentially is just a high build primer that will fill in any imperfections. Followed up with a primer sealer that gives us a good uniform color. Next, base coat, which is your main color. And finally, multi layers of clear coat depending upon preference. It's prepared for primer by sanding it with 80 and 180 grit paper. I like how you stuck me with a hand sanding. You gotta play it smart sometimes, you know? He doesn't trust me with power tools. The final prep includes one more pass with some wax and grease remover. Then we'll be ready to prime. All in all, we have about 1,500 bucks in products along with a little over $1,000 in paint guns. Once you add a professional paint booth, a prep booth, an air compressor, along with the guns, you can see how a high-end custom paint job can be very expensive. Now, do you need three paint guns? Well, no but I highly recommend it if you can afford it because primer is very thick and it needs a large orifice to spray through. So I like to use a 2-0 tip in my primer gun. Now for base and clear, I like to use a 1-3 or 1-4 tip. You can accomplish almost any job with those. Now the reason I have a specific base gun and clear gun is if you take the chance and spray your base and clear through the same gun, there's a chance no matter how well you think you've cleaned it that you may get debris in your new clear coat from your last paint job. You definitely don't want to take that chance. Our first stage of paint is one coat of epoxy primer followed by PPG's K38 primer surface. After it is fully cured, we're ready to sand for paint. My preferred method is dry sanding. I'll guide coat and start off with 180 grit on a block. And as long as I haven't broken through the primer anywhere, I can re-guide coat and sand out my 180 grit scratches with 320. Wipe down the frame with degreaser. Now we can roll into the paint boot and then again with a tack rag to remove any debris. I'll start with one coat of sealer, followed by three coats of PPG DBC charcoal base, then three wet coats of PPG's 2021 clear, all supplied to us by single source in Nashville, Tennessee. 24 hours later, she's done. Man, I really love how this frame came out. The color's perfect, the gloss is spot on. This thing's gonna be a show winner for sure. Yeah, man, it just shows what you can do with a little bit of effort and quality materials, but I can't wait to get the rest of these parts painted and start putting this thing back together. Well, you better get to work then, because you got a lot of it. <laughs> it's cool, man. I like the color. Next, how to avoid this by recalibrating your speedometer. We've had a lot of people ask us recently about the importance of tuning when it comes to modern lifted trucks. Now everybody knows that a programmer can add great horsepower, but what about when you add larger tires or different gears? Well, it takes more than just horsepower to make these modern fuel injected trucks behave properly. 
Take this one for example. It's a 2015 Sierra with the optional 6.2 liter, 420 horsepower V8. Has six inches of lift and 35 inch tires, but the tune in the computer is still stock. It looks pretty tough though. You know, it's been a while since I've been behind the wheel of a lifted truck, so we're gonna go take this one out and see what we think of it. The first thing you notice is the power of the 6.2. 420 horsepower goes a long way, moving a roughly 5,000 pound pickup. But the throttle response could be a little more reactive when you lay your foot on the gas. You know, the other thing that I've noticed driving this truck around is the transmission shift points. They seem like they're, they're happening quite a bit too early. And I think part of that is because these larger tires on the back, they throw off the vehicle speed sensor because you know it expects to be spinning a certain RPM. And when you throw bigger tires on there, that all gets skewed off. Another thing is the speedometer. With 35 inch tall tires, we're cruising at a nice 45 miles an hour. But the GPS shows we're actually going 49. We can correct all of these issues and get more power with the Max Energy 2.0 from Hypertech. And we always go for the higher power setting, so naturally we made sure to fill it up with premium fuel. We checked that the tires were properly inflated and we're going to measure so we can input this diameter into the tuner. This will correct the part throttle shifting and fix the speedometer problem all in one. With all the adjustments made, we'll get back out on the road and see how it feels. You know, one of the first things I notice about this Tune 6.2 is the throttle response. It's like your foot is directly connected to that throttle blade on the engine. You put your foot down, it opens it up. And honestly, the biggest difference is when you're driving around town, when you're in traffic, you just don't have that lag anymore. It's like you want to get out, you want to pass somebody, just put your foot down and it goes. You know? I was looking at the dyno sheets for the Max Energy 2.0, and while the horsepower and torque numbers are really impressive, the gains at 6,500 RPM really show the potential of the 6.2. It gained an additional 42 horsepower and 33 pound-feet of torque to the rear wheels. Now, wow, that's a lot of bang for your buck. The other important thing that we wanted to check, you've got the transmission shift points. They seem to be ironed out a little bit, is the speedometer. I've got the cruise control set at 75 miles an hour. What does the app say? 75, right on the money. Wow, you can't beat it. So we've got a correct speedometer. The transmission shifts properly. We've got a whole lot more horsepower and a lot of throttle response. Now you don't have to worry about getting a speeding ticket for something you weren't doing in the first place. That's the best part. Hypertech Max Energy 2.0. When improving the power and handling of your truck, one thing you can't forget about are the brakes. We upgrade to EBC brakes on many of our projects. These are truck yellow stuff sport pads and they increase braking effect 30 to 40% over stock. They feature a special high friction material that is perfect for heavy trucks with power adders or larger wheels and tires. And to complement the pads, you can get a set of GD Sport rotors with a full sweep slot that wipes water and dust off the braking surface for consistent performance. And you can find your set at ebcbrakes.com. The last thing you want to hear when cruising in your truck is road noise. And Lizard Skins made it easy to combat noise, heat, and vibration with their line of insulation products. Their ceramic insulation limits the amount of heat entering your vehicle's interior and reduces temps up to 30 degrees. And their sound control dampens rattles and vibrations, improving the sound of high-end audio systems. And their Pro Install Kit handles the thick viscosity of their materials with ease. So go to lizardskin.com for more. We all know how frustrating it is to find small but essential parts to your truck's restoration. And Brothers Truck Parts has hard to find items like these half ton cab mounts and bushings. This 60 through 66 GM kit includes the rubber, steel cab mounts, and all the hardware you need to keep your cab sitting straight. Now you can find them at brotherstrucks.com. Thanks for watching Truck Tech. See you next time.